Today, I'm taking a look at Photoshop's new Generative AI Fill tool. And believe me, when I say this is game-changing, this tool is game-changing. Whether it's speeding up your workflow or opening new creative possibilities, let's take a look. Hope you're doing well today. Hope you've had some caffeination of your choice. Got some nice, strong coffee here keeping me going. Right, so the first thing you want to do is install the Photoshop beta, and to do that, you navigate to your Creative Cloud app. Make sure you have the latest version of Photoshop installed, and then navigate down to Beta Apps. And from there, you can install the Photoshop beta. Here we are inside of Photoshop. Let's try this out. I have a photo of these two fine, very dapper gentlemen. But what if I just wanted one dapper gentleman? With the Generative Fill, we can make that happen. To use Generative Fill, you need some kind of selection. And to do that, I'm going to grab my lasso tool, or L, on the keyboard. And I'm going to just draw a selection. And with that done, here is our Generative Fill menu down here. We have a few options. You can type in whatever prompt you want here to generate objects. But in this case, I actually want to remove him. So I'm just going to leave the prompt blank and hit Generate. And now you can see it goes pretty fast. But every time after this in the video, while it's loading, I'm just going to speed it up. That way you're not waiting around for this to process. But really, all things considered, it doesn't take too long to process, which is really impressive. And there we go, it's done. Now. Reality can be whatever I want. So you'll notice it creates a new layer and it saves your variations that you can switch back and forth between at any time. So this is a completely non-destructive way of working. All right, so I think the next thing I want to do is use Generative Fill to expand this image. To do that, I'm going to hit C to bring up the Crop Tool, and I'm just going to drag this out. Let's go pretty big with this. All right, yeah, just like that, and Enter. And now I'm going to grab the Rectangular Marquee Tool, and I'm just going to make a selection here over my image, and then hit Control shift i and invert that. And you'll notice I've come in just a little bit from the edge. And in my testing, I have found that that gives the best results. Sometimes if you go right out here to the edge and try to expand it, it gives you some weird borders. So coming in just a little bit on the edges here seems to give the best results. Wow. And I'm going to cycle through our options here. And I think this is definitely my favorite. Yeah, this one's speaking to me. I really like this. But I think we can push this image even further just going to make a selection down here, kind of like a derpy pyramid shape, select all the way around here, maybe even come out a little bit on the edges here. And I'm just holding shift when I make the selection and you'll notice that plus sign appears on the lasso so I can add to the selection. In the same way, if I've selected too much, I can hold alt and remove some of that selection. I'm actually going to type a prompt this time, water reflecting. All right, and there we go. We now have water in this image. The really cool thing I have found with this tool, it not only calculates the position of the sun and lighting, it can also do reflections, which just blows my mind. Let's do one more thing to this image. I'm going to select pretty close up to him and here. And do that and then hold shift, add a selection on the other side. And now, prompt, I'm going to just type in fog. That's, that is pretty cool. You can't tell me that's not cool. It's completely changed background. Let's see what other options we have. Ooh. I think either the third or the first. Yeah, I think the first. Got these nice little trees back here. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. So cool. We started with this to this, to this, to this, and finally this. And I tell you what, that has left my flabber completely gasted. There's a feature of quick selections with the generative fill tool. So if we hit Q on the keyboard and shift backspace, so we have excluded everything from our selection now. I'm just gonna grab a brush and I'm just going to draw a nice little thing up here in the sky. And now I'm going to hit Q again to exit quick select mode. And now I have my selection here. Inside of Generative Fill, what should we add to the sky? Well, I think this photo is really, I think it's missing some UFOs. So let's add our very own UFO. Okay, we've got a couple options there. Again, what I was talking about, the lighting. It's matching the lighting. It's pretty cool. 
All right, so we've got our UFO. Here's the cool thing with quick selections. We don't have to use 100% white. So if we click on the palette over here right now, this is at 100% brightness. Let's say we bring this down to, I don't know, 35 and the generative fill tool will use the intensity of your selection to generate new objects. And you can see this time the selection is not as bright because I'm not selecting everything with that 100% white. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Got that. And now we'll exit quick select mode by hitting Q. Now the selection is still there. If we go back, the selection is there, but if no more than 50% of the pixels are selected, the selection won't be visible. We won't be able to see those marching ants. And since our selection was at 35%, it's not visible, but it is still there. Let's go ahead, type in UFO again. And this time we should see the intensity of our generated object is lower. All right, now there we go. We have an almost invisible UFO. It's a very interesting effect. The intensity of your selections affects the generated object. Just an interesting feature of generative fill that I haven't seen talked about too much. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. Like we've looked at in the previous example, using it to expand the image. I'm going to take this image, which was shot in portrait, and I'd really like a landscape. So again, I'm going to hit C to use my crop tool. And I'm really curious because this has a very complex background. I want to see how well generative fill handles this. So we're going to expand and this time make it horizontal. Drag this over and center her. Here we go. And again, M for the marquee tool. Control shift I to invert and let's generate. It was perfect. Perfect. There we go. My photo is now horizontal. The lighting on the trees, all of this looks really, really good. Now let's see what our other options here that it gave us. Okay, a little darker. This one's bright. I feel like the first option it has, yeah, it has some sky over here, and I think this looks really good. Yeah, always look through all your variations. Again, talking about these more practical, real-world applications for using this. The thing that I know I'm going to be turning to this again and again is touching up my photos. So looking at this photo, we've got some out of focus buildings back here. What if we don't want those? What if we don't want this grass here? Let's just make a selection and generate. Something that with the clone stamp tool would have taken a matter of minutes, now takes literal seconds. And now you may be like, hey, didn't we ever have content aware fill? Couldn't we do stuff like that with content aware fill? Content aware works on very small out of place objects. For anything larger, it just does not work. And just for the sake of testing, let's do content aware fill and compare the results so fill content aware and let's let it go it's looking at us yeah so degenerative fill content aware fill i i think enough said final and definitely my favorite application of this tool got this photo here i love this shot if i zoom in we've got some flyaway hairs here something i would normally touch up with the clone stamp tool maybe even spot healing but it is so freaking easy so I'm just going to draw a selection around all the little hairs here. And again, I'm just going to hit generate without any prompt and see what it does for us. Just like that, all the hairs are gone. I mean, man, this is what blows my mind. Like one click, one click, and all of that is gone. This right here, that is a practical use of this. Something I know I'm going to be using over and over in the future. When it comes to cleaning up photos, this is honestly probably the first tool I'm always going to turn to because it just does such a good job. I mean, you can cycle through these like, yeah. It's so good before, after, even around her eye. It looks so good. So thanks for sticking around, exploring this cool new Photoshop feature with me today. If you enjoyed this video, consider sucker punching the like button. Or if you'd like to see more of my photography, follow me on Instagram. I'd really appreciate it. That's about it. Stay caffeinated.